Hello everyone, welcome to the final review. So, like we usually do, we're just gonna walk around and talk to random characters and uh, rate them in that way, but we're not giving them numbered ratings, as you guys know. Let's just talk about the characters. We got a lot to go over because a lot of stuff has happened uh, in the past few episodes. Hi Fury, you want lap time? Yeah, lap time. So let's start with our good buddy Caster. Caster, as far as what he's been doing, has basically been the same thing all game. We are giving him the Blizzard Orb because he is our Berserker, he's a Jump Zerker. But when we equip him with the Blizzard Orb, he gets X Magic. But that's not why we're giving him the Blizzard Orb. Although we have made use of it when we uh, equip this uh, Phantom that has Commander because it allows you to control your Berserker. He will never do X Magic if he's Berserking. But if you can control him, you can. And his magic list is pretty substantial now because he has learned Ultima. He did save us in the Fanatics Tower with a Final Phoenix from Odin. He was also runicking everything because of this Empow Birds Innate Runic, which kind of neuters the tower, if you're, if I'm being honest with you. And then giving him this Red Cap, which is Water Boost, because the Blizzard Orb attack is Clean Sweep. And then we give him Carbuncle, which is Water Pierce, which basically makes Clean Sweep non-elemental. He's been doing some massive damage. Uh, we have a couple of characters with desperation moves. He's doing as much with clean sweep as a desperation move is doing to one character. So yeah, Caster has been great, uh, even Zerking. Uh, when he tackles stuff or hits stuff, it's not good, but just the fact that he has AoE, basically non-elemental damage, it, he's he's pretty dang good, man. I like him a lot, and uh, he's got these other ones. Bismarck does water boost, but we'll never take off Water Pierce if we can help it. He did get to do some uh, X-Magic Bolt 3s with this Bolt Boost Esper because we were learning Ultima at the time, and somebody did have to have this com Commander Esper, so we were able to do X-Magic Bolt 3s with the Bolt Boost, which is super nice. I still don't know what Prism Wall does from Tritox, so we haven't figured that out. And yeah, his magic power is 53, that's pretty good, and we can always up it with other stuff. Okay, uh, yeah, Maria. Let's, let's check out Maria. So Maria we haven't used all that much, uh, sadly. She's got that Empower Dread. Now she can use the same Esper that we've been using with Daryl for quickening. Basically uses a skill from a magic, like a magic spell, until you run out of MP or the enemy dies. Uh, and victory cry from this at the end of battle. If that character's still alive, they get all their MP and HP back. And SOS Golem is self-explanatory. Her magic list, nothing incredible. We actually haven't even fa filled it out, really. Since she has Dread, she can actually continuously Dread. Uh, so if enemies can be petrified, she can essentially turn the entire enemy group into statues. But if it doesn't work, she's just going to do it till she runs out of MP. Empower is Empower, it's whatever. Basically what we've been doing with her is equipping the Illumina and having her swing. She is actually on the lower end of our characters, like if you really think about it, she doesn't have much she can do like the other characters can. She does have this Gold Mage, but again, we don't have any spells really worth doing. I still haven't figured out what Crisis Arm is, if it is in fact like the Chrono Trigger Robo Weapon. This has Commander on it as well. Yeah, she's she's actually one of our... our I won't say bad, I'll just say worse than the rest characters. Uh, she's not very, very good. That's okay, Maria. We might leave you behind just to circle on the airship so we can get the hell out of there in time. Okay, well, we just got done talking about her, so let's go get Daryl. So Daryl has been an absolute powerhouse this game. I guess I would say she's Maria tier. Not this Maria, but Opera Maria, you know, the one that's always rated, was always rated 9 or 10. Every time we got her, she was a good character. Daryl's like that character this game. Number one, Meteor as a command. Number two, her magic list, she learned Ultima at level 16. She's got Merton, she's got Life 2, Cure, and then she's got that Seraphim Esper, which is the use a spell forever until you run out of MP, which is really good for Meteor, and also good for Ultima if Caster isn't on the team and is runicking stuff. Daryl is kind of ridiculous. The only drawback she has is that Fairy Ring, because it's auto-confused. We've been giving her a Merit Award and giving her a Flame Shield, because the Flame Shield's question mark is no muddle. So we can equip that, she'll have a decent shield, and she won't be auto-confused. But that's really her only drawback. Like, everything else is good. She does have this Necromancer and Return Magic thing, so if, I'm pretty sure Necromancer uh, is... If you have a zombie on the team, they're controllable. As long as you have this Esper equipped. Return Magic is a percentage chance to throw the same magic spell you just got hit with back at the enemy. Ifrit has Instant Act on it and SOS Escape. SOS Escape we tried in the tower and didn't get it to work. I'm sure there's a way to 
abuse it. And instant act just means there's no wait time after you pick a command. Like there's no charge up time to do it. It just happens immediately. Daryl, probably the best character that we got, if I'm being real with you. She's kind of ridiculous. Okay, Arvis, probably our worst character. He's definitely worse than Maria. Artek is a pretty good skill. Hero Ring is a pretty good relic to have innately. Question mark Elf Fire is okay if you think about it in a vacuum, but not when it's random targeting. So yeah, it's roulette targeting, question mark amount of times I'll fire, it can hit our party, it's not worth using. As far as magic, he does have quick and meteor and stuff, so he is kind of useful still. You know, that's a universal thing almost. He can use seraphim too, so he could use uh, meteors forever. Alexander taught him all the good stuff. He has Odin for final phoenix and stuff, uh, so that's utility. At the end of the day, he's just swinging, and he can't equip the Illumina like Maria can off rip. He would have to have a merit award. Not the best. Not the best, buddy. R66X, the whole reason we were brought here in the first place. Let's talk about him. So R66X has mute cave-in. Now cave-in can be helpful with enemies that have huge HP pulls. It's never going to kill anything, but it will bring it down low enough for us to kill him. He has X magic and an Atlas armlet equipped. Yeah, his magic list is not amazing. Basically, all he can really do is Merton. Um, I haven't checked his Espers since we got some new ones, but yeah, there's nothing great in here for him to X magic with. The only thing that could potentially help him is if we give him a Merit Award and then the Iron Helmet and have him learn Flare, uh, which we'll probably do on our way up the tower. So he will be able to X magic Flare, but that does cost a lot of MP and he doesn't have any like cost reduction outside of equipping a Relic. So we'll just have to see about your 6 x but always happy to see a Chrono Trigger Sprite, even if you're not technically Robo, you're a different R series. Let's go with the Necromancer. So we haven't really used him all that much. However, Gogo with this new patch can now equip Espers and he has got a lot of them. He has this Bahamut, that's cool. Uh, I didn't know he had that. Oh, and you can also see uh, that there's a little bit of a menu problem here with the uh, Espers because it's not showing the percentage it's taking him to learn because he can't actually learn spells. Uh, he can equip espers, but can't alert, learn spells. He has final phoenix, that could be helpful. He does not have the esper that has necromancer on it, funnily enough, but <laughs> he does have vampire with shiva, which it turns all your attacks into uh, HP draining, but that's not very good because it's limited by your HP pool. VIP, which we'll never use. He does have immortal, which does choke smoke you back to life, so that is pretty uh, thematic, and we probably will give him that if we take him with us into the tower. Chances are he is coming. Nothing, nothing fantastic in esper. He does have lore equipped right now, and our lore list is pretty big, and his stats are mime stats. The other thing that sucks about him is his innate relic is the Cursed Ring. At the end of the day, he's just a mime. Evil Tina. Evil Tina has been freaking badass all game since we got her. Her sprite is now screwed up, and it shares one with Selfie for whatever reason. It was just like a visual glitch in the game. If you see her like in battle, it's the correct colors. Regardless of that, she is freaking awesome because she has a bird. So Palador has been absolutely wrecking shit. Bird flies in, you jump on it, your whole party's protected from shit, they come back down with attacks, and then land and do their attack if you do the uh, sequence correctly. She straight up won us a fight with the Storm Dragon in the Fanatic's Tower by herself because of Palador. A fantastic character, that's a fantastic Esper. Fireball, we've used a few times, but it's not that you know, effective, uh, especially when we have a bird we can go to. She has a Hyper Wrist equipped innately, I don't remember what the uh, question mark on it was. I guess we can check. Double EXP. Okay, so that's why she's a little higher level than everybody. And Vigor plus 50, which actually helps with her coming down with her weapon from the sky. And we have been equipping her the ogre with the Ogre Nix because that is good Terra's signature weapon. And she can use it. And she's basically jumping because she's coming down with Palador and the Ogre Nix won't break. We're usually using Ogre Nix because somebody else on the team is using Illumina. And we are restricted on only using one of every really, really good item. And then uh, yeah, she doesn't have a magic command. Her espers, Ragnarok, is doing vampire, which is dumb. And then uh, Phantom, she can equip when we do want to control caster, but that's very rare. Otherwise, if she's on a team with caster, she's not equipping any espers because vampire sucks and we don't want him to uh, be controlled most of the time because then he can't clean sweep. Evil Tina, awesome character. Glad to have her. She's been kicking ass. Her and her bird. Uh, I guess we'll go talk about her sister now. 
So Bad Terra has also been an amazing character this game. Number one, she has my favorite relic equipped, which is the White Keep. So she's getting passive awesome stat ups just from having that equipped. As you know, we're not doing Esper level up bonuses in this run, uh, so everybody is just base stats. And having a White Cape equipped is pretty good. It also protects from Mute and Imp my two least favorite status effects in this game, if you don't count Freeze. And it's really cool that uh, when we had her as a character before, she had X-Zone. And now she has X-Medio and X-Fur. She's all about, like, X skills, which is cool. So, yeah, X-Medio we've basically been using with her because it's a desperation attack and does butt-ton of damage. Uh, X-Fur we've had some use here and there with. Uh, Seize doesn't work on enemies unless they're actual characters, like we were able to do it to Kafka in front of the Esper uh, gate, uh, and we can get confused or charmed and do it to our own characters, which sucks. But uh, yeah, can't hit enemies, so it's just a dead skill there, but it's attached to Axe Medio, so you can't complain. And then her magic list is nothing really super impressive, because we haven't really been using magic with her. She does have Merton, uh, which might come into play later. Her Espers, she can also call on Palador if she wants to. Zone Seek, we've been using a lot, just because we've had Tina on the team, and doing return magic with Madwin, when you're on a team with, do with someone doing Palador, you will do Palador again with her, and that can mess up the game. So, uh, yeah, that's a problem. And then, I don't, I still don't know what Faith does. We'll never use Unicorn, because VIP is literally Bannon status, so, yeah, never use VIP if you can help it. And yeah, Palador's giving uh, double AP and uh, phys physical font, which basically I figured out what the font suffix means, okay? So, so let's say we had physical boost, right? That gives the character with that junction equipped better physical damage. When it's font, it's a global thing for your whole team. Like, remember when I did um, Quasar with Ultros and he had that nuke font equipped and then I mimicked it with Necro and he did as much damage as Ultros did and I'm like, does he mimic the, the extra nuke font status? No. It is universal across your team if it's font. So if she equips Palador, the entire team is better with physical attacks. But we've been doing Zone Seek because I like SOS Morph and being able to throw Zone Seek sometimes can help. And if she's not on a team with Tina, I will give her return magic because it's just hype and super cool. Yeah, we might try Palador at some point now that I know what font does, but Bad Terra, cool as shit, awesome character, big time legacy character here, and uh, yeah, I like her, she's cool. Okay, Emperor Gestal. Gestal was not a bad character. He does just have Mimic, so that makes him pretty good already. He's got a sniper sight, so he'll never miss with physical attacks, but we don't really care about that. He's got a million espers he can equip. Raiden is the thing that has nuke font on it, and Gunblade, which I still don't know what it does. I did figure out what Distribute does, though. So Distribute is if... Like, let's say Gestal is at 2,500 HP, and we heal him for like 2,000 or something. Whatever is left over from that heal on him gets distributed evenly across the rest of the party. So if you ever heal over max HP, the excess is spread around. That's pretty cool. Gunblade, I still don't know what it does. In fact, nobody in the Discord knows what it does yet. This is still a discovery that we have not figured out. We will hopefully find out. I might do some testing just to see if I can come up with any more ways of figuring it out, but yeah, nobody knows what Gunblade does. Uh, he's got Final Fe Phoenix also. Chemist, I still don't know what that does either. Fenrir has Loner and SOS Warp. I'm fairly certain that Loner just means like you are more powerful if your other party members are dead and you're the only one alive. And SOS Warp is obviously when you're low on HP, you throw out a warp and get the hell out of there. He also has Seraphim for quickening, and he has Ultima, so that could be something that we use with him. Shout with the Immortal thing and Fizz font, which is really neat. Uh, also, Final Ripple, working with Immortal is just a mean combo. So what happens when you have Immortal? Immortal choke smokes you back to life, and it makes you a zombie when you come back. However, the order of the way the, the the way that the order works with Final Ripple, when you die, you get Immortal back first as a zombie, and then you Final Rippler. And what that does is it ripples the zombie status that you just got from being choke smoked onto the enemy. So you are now alive, not zombie status, at zero HP and can be healed regularly up from there. If it happens again, because Final Rippler only happens once uh, when you die, if it happens again and you get resurrected with Immortal, you are a zombie. 
So, like a proper zombie that cannot be healed and stuff. It's just a goofy Esper, and I love it. The interaction is just neat. Yeah, so that's pretty much the one we've been putting on him. But yeah, he's just a decent character, and the Espers just make him more fun. So, rock and roll, Gastel. Okay, Orlando. Orlando's been pretty great, too. He's just been a super fun character all game. If I'm being real with you, he's just been really fun. So, Orlando has fight... Poison Frog Slow, Magic and Item. Poison Frog Slow, not the best skill. Poison Frog does a lot of damage, but a lot of things resist poison. Uh, and Slow is slow. He never got to make use of a Sneak Ring because he doesn't have Steel, and I haven't equipped him with a Thief Knife because he can't equip it regularly. And his Relic Slot's going to be taken up by something else, not a Merit Award. What I've been doing is giving him the Thief Glove. Now, the Thief Glove changes Poison Slow into our sword, which is a million times better, if you ask me. And, uh, yeah, he's been pulling a lot of really good stuff from that. We have not seen a million Empowerers like we did with uh, Dude in that one seed. He's actually pulling, like, really good stuff. Uh, Quadra Slam, um, Cleave, Stunner. I've seen a lot of really good stuff and very little Empowerer, so that's great. Uh, his Battle Power is pretty decent once we get him all the way equipped up. He has Starlet. Uh, I don't know what Esper Defense J exactly does. I think it might give you better defenses against certain elements based on what Esper has it. Reflect Boost, I have no idea what that means. I, I'm gonna guess that Reflect Boost is like... I don't think it's that it, it reflects things you shouldn't be able to reflect. I think it just makes things that are reflected off of this character stronger. Because if you reflect something off of one of your characters, like off of a wall, it actually has a penalty. I'm pretty sure in FF6, it has a penalty that it takes from being reflected, right? So it does less damage than it normally would. Reflect Boost either reverses that and makes it normal damage, probably, or it increases it and makes it more damage if you reflect something. So, I don't know, that requires testing too. I, I I am definitely going to keep this seed around after I finish it, just to test some of this stuff out. SOS Golem, obviously, already know, and then Commander with the, the Phantom. But just in general, Orlando has just been a fun character because of our sword, and he's just cool, man. It's Orlando. Majisa. Majisa has one of my single favorite command names I've ever seen in a seed, Supum. <laughs> so, it's Sourmouth Pummel. Sourmouth, pretty good. It's been actually imping a lot of stuff sometimes. And then Pummel is just non-elemental single target damage. Not bad. Uh, she has a barrier ring equipped innately. But now she's basically learned Meteor and Flare, and that's what we're doing with her. She has Quick also. And really nothing else. That's about it. It's just her magic list and Supum. So yeah, and her, yeah, her junctions are basically boring. I do like this for Gold Mage because she can throw flares for cheap because it's gonna just gonna cost money instead of MP. So yeah, that's probably what we put on her. She's cool. Okay, Ultros. Ultros is another character with a Desperation Command. He is on Team Shadowfang, which is basically what we've been doing with him all game. He has a True Knight as his innate relic, which is not very Ultros-y, but whatever. And then he's got Lore, which uh, we've used a few of them throughout the game. Uh, I've used Big, Big Guard a couple of times. Uh, Quasar, we finally got to start using in the World of Ruin. We used it once in the World of Balance because I just wasn't thinking. It's banned until the World of Ruin. We do have a place we can go that I will probably go to try and get Grand Train again. He's also got Raiden for that nuke font that I was talking about. And uh, that's basically it as far as Espers. That's what we'd equip on him. Distribute Gunblade, I still know what it does. Nuke font's awesome considering he has Quasar. That just makes it way stronger. Pretty fucking cool that you were here. Basically it for him. Selfie. So Selfie, pretty damn good. We haven't used her for a while because she was literally the last character we could recruit in the World of Ruin. But the gold hairpin innately, which is really, really good. So half MP cost. And she can also equip that tiger mask which gives the gold mage status. So she'll do half MP, which means she'll spend half GP to do the stuff. I think. I haven't paid attention. But uh, I'm sure that that works. Uh, she can also call on Palador if she wants. She has Bismarck and Shiva. Uh, I don't know what, what Esper would be best to give her at this point. Probably Palador just for the Fizz font. We probably wouldn't summon Palador at all. But yeah, she's got Flare, and she's basically throwing half-cost Flares. And if she's on a team with Ultros or someone else who can equip the uh, Raiden Esper, then Flare's going to be even stronger. W Bless has also been really, really good too. So W Bless is two random like buff skills. The only time it kind of sucks if we get like Carbuncle or if she gets Escape and just runs away. She's definitely coming with us. 
into the tower. She's a really good character. And finally, Baram. Baram's the most busted character that we have. This is why we haven't used him a lot. And he's kind of a jerk. I don't know what his deal is, but he's being an asshole. He's got sprint shoes that taught him slow. Question mark earth, which we barely used because why use that when you have flare star fallen one? So flare star will... I mean, there's a good chance that'll just clear the enemy group you're fighting. But if not, whatever's left is going to one HP, you hit it once and it's dead. That works on every single enemy in the game, including Final Kefka. Yeah, I've been avoiding using it because it would make the seed way too easy and boring. Bayram has been kind of sitting back a lot, which is fine because, again, he's being kind of a jerk. He's nothing like when we had him before. I don't know what's up with him, but uh, as far as Espers, he has Final Phoenix, which could be helpful at Loner SOS Warp, which is basically what we've been giving him. Brace, I don't know what that is. Earth Boost is pretty good if we had to use the question mark Earth, but we never will. Why? Fizz Font is okay. Water Boost, Vampire, yeah. None of this stuff is worth it. He's not really worth it. It just makes for some freaking boring gameplay, man. Just call down an army of angels to bring your butthole enemies to 1 HP and then smack them with something like it just makes it dumb. So yeah, Baram, you're really, really good, but I don't want you on my team. So take that. As far as the seed goes, I've already said it a million times. These junction flags are awesome. It makes it a brand new game. Trying to come up with cool ways to get around problems or trying to come up with neat combos with your uh, junctions. I think it's going to be more interesting when we're not doing a Mad World seed because we'll get like less busted junctions and we'll have to actually mix and match them to find cool uh, like builds. So I'm super into doing that when we play another seed. The Fanatics Tower sucked but it was not as bad as the last Fanatics Tower we did. Oh my god. But it was still pretty assholey, especially because of all the laws that Kefka kept passing as we went up the floors. I'm really hoping that the end of the seed is going to be kind of a uh, challenge also, because last game it wasn't. That is why we have not grinded. We've not done our grind. Uh, part of that is because uh, it's against the law to grind. <laughs> and also, I'm using a double EXP flag, so it's double EXP and double magic points. Uh, for the whole game. So we're at, you know, respectable levels already. Like 45 is pretty good for going into Kafka's Tower. The code does not work anymore. The 12,000 EXP per battle code that I usually use right before Kafka's Tower, I think it's because it's conflicting with that flag that's doing double EXP. So the game doesn't know what to do. So it crashed once when I tried to use it to do the grind, and I'm like, okay, well, just screw, screw grind in that. Police are no more. The fallen Kafka has not succeeded in breaking Two Tone's will. Yes. If anything, his resolve has grown from the challenge. It appears the time is now. I will be taking complete control. Isn't that dangerous? Aren't the Hypno Shades enough? Clearly not. Despite being just another Kafka, he has resisted succumbing entirely to that type of control somehow. This must be done. Where am I? A morgue? Silence. You've got some nerve. Do you know who I am? Intimately. Yeah, man. I'm excited to see how the tower's gonna be. And shut up. Oh, great. Now that you're done with your little review, get up here. It's announcement time. I'm here, Kafka. What do you got? I told you I'd have some particularly fun laws for you once you left the Rogue Police headquarters, didn't I? I always keep my promises. Yeah, yeah, lay it on me. I'm ready for anything. These laws were specifically curated to make you miserable, Tony. Okay, just freaking let me know. I mean, you've already given me a lot of misery just passing laws on my characters, so... Whatever you got, I'm ready for it. You don't scare me. Go to the Opera House and retrieve the copy of Behind the Brass Curtain that Outros left in the rafters. Okay. I'll go I'll go rescue my butt. It shouldn't be up there anyway. Somebody'd probably like to read it. Yeah, there it is. Alright. Got it right here, Kafka. What do you want me to do with it? Take it to Lola and Miranda. Alright. Uh, we'll do. Not like she doesn't have enough copies of it already. Alright, we're at Lola's, Kafka. Take it inside. And burn it in front of her. I can't do that. This is... 
My book. You can always take your punishment. I'll take any punishment over destroying my literature. No frickin' way, dude. Give me your worst. All right, return to your airship then. Gladly. You know what, I'm not going back to my airship yet. I'm giving this copy of my book to someone who's actually gonna take care of it. Here, Lola, here's another copy of Behind the Brass Curtain, free. Oh, thank you, that's one of my favorites. No problem. Did I hear that right? Kevka asked you to burn it? Yeah, how fucked up is that? Jeez, that's not cool. I think he only did that because he knew you wouldn't. Yeah, maybe. All right, Kevka, what kind of punishment you got for me? I'll take anything over doing that. Fly to Jidor. Right? I'm over Jidor. Your punishment is to go down into Ozer's basement and compliment Cheddarnook until he's satisfied. Are you fucking serious? Or you could go get that book back from Lola and set it ablaze. Your choice. Let's get a team together. Can't believe he's making us do this. Can't even think of anything I like about Chad. You better figure something out. Hello, Ozer. Here to compliment your painting. Oh, hello there. I heard you had something to say to me. Your pixel art for what the painting is supposed to look like is really good, and I think it looks cool. Ah, oh, that's nice of you. What else? Despite how annoying it is, the concept for how your boss battle is supposed to work is really cool and interesting, but I still hate it. Ah, that sounds like a little backhanded compliment to me. The fight is really good. Conceptually, all right? I'm still not satisfied. I think the cool, like, green thorny vines on your sprite are neat and well-designed, okay? Hmm, that's not good enough. I want you to apologize. For what? For calling me a butthole so many times. I will never apologize for that. Oh really? Careful now. I'll tell Kefka. That is one thing that I will never do. So tell him whatever you want, Chad. You know what? Tell him I called you a butthole again, because I'm doing it. Butthole. How dare you. Get out of my house. Gladly. That was the worst thing I've ever had to do. Fucking say nice things about Chad. Never again. Chatternook has informed me that your words failed to satisfy his ego. Yeah, nothing would have. I would have been sitting there having to compliment him for hours for him to feel good about himself. Well, I've got a new punishment for that, then. Let's hear it. You have to compliment... me. Really? Well, you know what, Kafka? You're gonna be surprised, man. Because I've spent my whole life complimenting you. What? Yeah. You're my favorite villain in a video game, ever. Really? What the hell? I mean, you actually blew up the world, and you do it for fun and chaos. It's not about some, you know, philosophy that you have or anything. I mean, you do develop one by the end of the game, but I think that you came up with it on a whim. You just like destruction. You are a nihilist, but you're also insane. Existential dread probably led you certain directions. You were experimented on. I mean, you are kind of a tragic villain, man, but you wear it well. You're hilarious. You're easily my favorite villain. I love to hate you, dude. Wow. I, uh, I didn't know that. What is happening? Is the Fallen Kafka fighting back? How is that even possible? Well, yeah, I mean, even with all these laws you've been passing and stuff, yeah, they've been annoying, and I freaking get really mad at you depending on which ones you throw at me, but you sound like you're having fun, and that's what Kefka does, you know? He freaking has fun with the destruction and the, the discord that he causes, you know? This is right on message for you, man, just chaos. Bullshit. Destruction. Insanity. Fun. There you go. There's my compliment, Kafka. No. There's no way. How could I be overpowered by that puppet? I... 
I'm the original. Whatever you say. <gasps> what is that? Well, I uh, can't say I was really expecting that response from you. So, when you say you hate me and call me a butthole and all that... Oh yeah, I still mean that, for sure. But I also understand why you are the way you are, and I respect it. Alright. Well, I suppose, in light of new information, until you enter my tower, the law does not apply to you and your little friends. You're free to do as you please. Really? Yes. I think it's only fair. Well, thanks, Kafka. I'm still coming to kick your ass. You know that, right? I mean, you can try, but don't keep me waiting. Do I look like a waiter? <laughs> now that's a classic challenge if I've ever heard one. That's it for the final review. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go around and do some stuff. Now that I'm free, uh, until we enter the tower, I'm gonna go around and do some stuff and do some testing. Let's freaking do that. I guess we're gonna go to the Velp Cave real quick and try to get some Grand Train. So we gotta find this encounter that gives it to us. Hopefully we can survive it. It's definitely not this one. We've seen this one a million times. Not this one either. It wasn't this thing, was it? No, this thing just spams because it has a zero ATB. It's this thing. It's it's her back there. She definitely does it. Okay, we need to, uh, okay, he's gonna clean sweep. Do I have mute? I do. I need to mute cast her before he kills her because I need Grand Train to go off. Oh, never mind, he's wrecked. Um, I guess I'll X for him. Sorry, Caster, I kinda need you out of here. Don't kill her, we need the Grand Train. See you, buddy. Take a nap. There it is. Survive it? We did not survive it. Nice zone seek, though. Okay, so what we need to do then, remove the Imp Halberd, uh, remove the Blizzard Orb. Actually, you can keep the Blizzard Orb. We'll just put on the Command Esper. And then you actually will get the final Phoenix Esper. That way, when she does Grand Train, we just final Phoenix back alive. Just like in the uh, Fanatics Tower. There she is. Okay. Oh, well, there's our final Phoenix. I need to Palador out of here because that's only going to happen once. Hopefully, she throws the Grand Train when we're in the air. That's all I can hope for because we'll still get it. Caster had to go ahead and freaking die before the Grand Train went off. Come on, lady, do it. She keeps doing this arm saint instead. She's dead, because I'm about to do a bunch of meteors now. Oh, she's still alive. Maybe not after the x Meteo. Oh, she's still alive. There it is. We're dead. We don't have a freaking way to come back. We're just dead. Cool. Yeah. Caster, I need you to uh, to not die early. Let's put you in the back row. There's no road police to freaking stop us. There's the Grand Train. Okay, we're getting it, like, right off the bat, then. Cool. Bring us back, Caster. Thank you, Phoenix. All right, now we just have to survive. Let's Ultima. Let's Ultima. Double Ultima. Let's X Medio. All right. We got a Palador coming, too. Daryl's about to do a butt-ton of Ultimas. She's now out of MP, though. Another Grand Drain that's gonna whiff us. All right, Daryl. Couple of Meteors might kill her. That'd be pretty cool. I should probably try to X for her. When I think about it. Aha! Yeah, if we get hit with another Grand Drain, we're boned, so. A couple Ultimas. Caster, if you don't kill her with this, you're dead. Yeah, you're dead. Nope, you blocked. Nice. Please? Oh my god, you're still alive. And we're getting hit with Grand Train and we're dead. This thing has too much HP. I guess I have to try and freaking X for it. That's the only way we can live. <sighs> that doesn't work. I have a striker equipped that I can potentially X kill her with. We have to be able to kill her immediately. I've made it all the way to the save point without running into them. And we've gotten a butt ton of levels just from fighting stuff on the way down. Final Phoenix is gonna go off. I need to try and X for immediately. We got SOS Golem now, that's good. Please, Bad Terra. I believe in you. Damn it. Okay. I don't know how we're supposed to do this then. We literally can't do enough damage. Unless, unless X for just missed or something, maybe that's the case. Come on. Nope. And we lost Daryl, so we don't have Ultimas now, which is just great. 
Maybe I can mute her? I don't have mute. Can I stop you? No. Fuck. How about break? Nope. There are some Ultimas then. We got her. Okay. And we have Grand Train now, yeah? Alright. Cool. We can get the hell out of here now. Bad Terra, if you would, please. Woo! So, Necro is now officially very useful, and, and Ultra is too, because of Nuke Font. We got some levels from doing all that, too. Look at that. Evil Tino with her double EXP innate relic, you know. I really doubt that we're gonna get need to get anything from the Colosseum, but I'm going to check real fast. Guess we could try for this Bahamut Sword again. Meteors, meteors, meteors. Glad she rolled doing that. Of course, now she's gonna be out of MP. Wombat, uh-oh. We're dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Screw the Bahamut Sword, I guess. Maybe we'll find one in the tower. Yeah, I really don't see anything else that we need. Now we can fly around and buy consumables. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and say buying Mega Elixirs are banned, because that's lame. Buy uh, Mega Elixir, having a stack of Mega Elixirs just is stupid. Let's get all the revivifies we can get, all the remedies we can get. I will definitely buy elixirs because they're single target, but mega elixirs, no. Because that basically just reduces us to using that as healing instead of depending on our characters who can heal us. Granted, we don't have a lot of healing in this seed, <laughs> if I'm being real. X potions I'll definitely buy. Yeah, we got like no AoE healing. Oh, I definitely want all of the X ethers I can get, please. Hey, Bad Terra. Good job up there in the tower. Doing any deliveries today? No, not today. Just here to pick up some supplies. Get some regular ethers, too, for outside of battle healing. Yeah, X potions we already got. I don't want dried meat. I don't think I'm worried about it. You know, just for convenience sake, I am going to buy two more merit awards. Uh, I'm just going to be using them on different characters in the tower, on, like, different teams in the tower, but I don't want to have to unequip every time, so I'm only going to have one per team equipped, but still. That really just saves me time. Green cherries, we're maxing out on those. Yeah, we currently only have one Mega Elixir. There's the Elixirs. We will max out on these. I have no qualms with that. Do I need anything else? Phoenix Downs. There we go. 99. Okay. Think that's all we need? We got plenty of tents, right? Yeah, 59 tenths ought to be enough. Okay, all the dragons are down, except for the ones in the tower. Unequip all members. And yeah, man, next episode, into the tower, we go. We'll see what kind of laws Kefka has in place up there. Until then, I will see you guys next time. Peace.